Hello friends. Welcome to the next tutorial of SQL injection. Today we will learn about what is union based injection. So union based attacks allow the tester to easily extract information from the database. Because the union operator can only be used if both queries have the exact same structure, the attacker must craft a select statement similar to the original query. So now let's learn what is a union operator. The union operator is used to combine the result set of two or more select statements. Each select statement within union must have the same number of columns. The columns must have similar data types and also the columns in each select statement must also be in the same order. If you look over here, we have a small query that is select column name from table 1 union select column name from table 2. This is the syntax of union based SQL query. And note that the number of columns selected in first query should be same as the number of columns selected in the second query. This is the most important point on which the union query depends on. So as you can see over here in our first query we have only one column that is column underscore name and in the second query as well, we have only one column that is column underscore name. When we are injecting SQL query in a web application, first we need to find the number of columns of the existing table in the website to inject union based SQLI. And to do so, we use another operator that is order by operator. Order by keyword sorts the records in ascending order by default. To sort the records in descending order, we use the desec keyword. Order by operator is used to sort the result set in ascending or descending order. In the URL, just type order by one. And if you don't get any error, then we'll move to the second part that is we'll try order by two and we'll keep on repeating the same thing until we get an error. When you get an error, for example, by trying order by 8, that is unknown order 8 in order clause. If you get such error, then we can conclude from this that there are only 7 columns being fetched by our first query. After that, we can apply our union command. Let's see an example on a testing environment. So first of all, our first step is to determine whether SQL vulnerability exists in this website or not. And to do so, we'll put an apostrophe sign and check on submission if it gives an error. Yes, it has given us an error. So we can conclude that SQL vulnerability exists in this website. If you're not able to get any error using an apostrophe sign, then you can use backslash symbol. This will also provide you an error like this. Now we'll use our order by command. Let's try order by one first. So first of all, I need to put an apostrophe sign cause I have to close the existing statement. After that, I'll put my command. And also I'll put hash. The reason for putting in hash is to comment out rest of the part that is in the query. If I don't do so, I won't be able to get the number of orders. Even if I try order by 100, order by 200, I will keep on trying but I won't get the result cause I haven't used the hash and it is not eliminating and commenting out the rest of the query. Yes, as the page refreshes, we can conclude that column 1 exists over here. Now, Let's try order by 2. Same is the case. Now let's try order by 3. Finally, a website has given us an error that is unknown column 3 in order clause. So this means that only two columns are being fetched by our first query. See, if I'll just use order by 3, Without using an apostrophe and hash, it won't do anything. So the reason we are putting an apostrophe and hash is that if you look over here, this part and this part is added automatically by the website. 
So to comment out this part, we have put a hash and to close this part, we have put an apostrophe. So that's why we are using apostrophe and hash over here. Sometime we'll need to put inverted comma and sometime we'll need to put hash depending upon what error has been given by the website. So now, as we know the number of columns being fetched by our first query, we can apply the union based command. Now, what is the next step? We have to find the name of the database schema by crafting a valid select statement, which will allow the attacker to list users tables and find their column names. And over here, if you look, it is a list of all the variables and functions that are predefined and are used in SQL injection. So, if we we'll type union select database with parentheses, it will show us the name of the current database. And if we want to know the current user, we will use this command. So after finding names of table and column, here is a list which we will be using in our SQLI. Information Schema It is a database name that is present in almost all the popular software. It holds the name of all the tables and columns of databases. Information underscore schema dot tables. It is a table inside information schema which holds the name of all the other tables. Likewise, information schema dot columns stores name of all the columns holds the name of all the other columns. Then we have table underscore name which holds the name of tables and column underscore name holds the name of columns. And there is one more that is table underscore schema. It holds the name of database the tables are associated with. Now in a testing environment, let's check what's the name of the database. For that, let's go to our testing environment. Now type apostrophe union select. As we know that two columns are being fetched by the first query. So we'll give name of only two columns over here. So we can write database parenthesis comma user with a hash. So it has provided us the name first name is providing us the name of database and the second surname is providing us user that is root at localhost. So now as we know our name of a database, we can go further and fetch the number of tables. After finding the number of database, we will type this command to get the name of table so that we'll get to know which table is there in our database and what information we need to fetch. Also, we'll inject another query which will provide us the name of column as we also want to know about the column name. First, let's inject this query to know about the name of table, comma, union, select, table, underscore, name, comma, table, underscore, name again as two columns are being fetched, from, from where, information, underscore, schema dot tables okay where table underscore schema is equal to what was the name of a database dwa and remember that this is case sensitive if you'll we'll put capital d over here it will not show you the result now, hashtag, let's look at this query again. So, what we are typing, union select table name, comma table name two times from information schema dot tables, where table underscore schema is equal to the name of our database that is DVWA. So now, let's hit submit. Voila. It has provided us the name of table that is guest book and user. So now as we know the name of table, now it's time for us to fetch the column name. So a command will be apostrophe 
यूनियन सिलेक्ट कॉलम अंडर स्कोर नेम टू टाइम्स फ्रॉम इंफॉर्मेशन स्कीमा डॉट सी ओ एल यू कॉलम्स वेयर टेबल स्कीमा इज इक्वल टू लेट्स लुक एट दिस केरी एज वेल सो वी आर फैचिंग कॉलम नेम फ्रॉम इंफॉर्मेशन स्कीमा डॉट कॉलम्स वेयर टेबल स्कीमा दैट इज आर डेटा बेस नेम इज डी वी डब्ल्यू ए लेट्स इट एंटर वाओ द लिस्ट इज वेरी लॉन्ग सो वी हैव कमेंट आई डी कमेंट नेम यूजर आई डी फर्स्ट नेम लास्ट नेम यूजर पासवर्ड एवतार last login and failed login these are the name of column so over here we need to check which all columns contain juicy data and are useful for us so till now we have found the name of our database table name and column name now it's time to extract some data so over here if you will see user and password might contain some juicy data so let's find out what does it contain for that a query will be apostrophe union select user comma password from if you remember we had two table names one was guest book and the other was users so this data is this data is stored in users so from users hash voila Finally we have got the data which we were looking for this is the admin which is the username and this is password admin password admin password so this is how we make use of union command to extract juicy data in the next tutorial we will learn about how we can extract data by using time based and boolean based sql injection